Hi, I'm Margie with Flow Motion Education, and this video is part one in a multi-part progression where we'll be exploring optimal foot pronation or optimal mechanics of your foot receiving the mass of your body and gait. So, before watching this, if you haven't already, please go watch my pronation supination video and my video on the importance of the tripod of the foot. If you are someone who has been trained or trained yourself it to, in any kind of lunge position, only allow your knee to track over the middle of the foot or your second toe or somewhere in that vicinity, please go watch my knee tracking video before doing this exercise. So, like I said, this is part one in the multi-part progression and I hate to start with my most complicated exercise, but it is literally one of the most complicated exercises I teach. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle, but they are absolutely integral. This exercise is a foundation for so many other progressions that uh, you may work on in the future. So we really want to make sure that we get all the little pieces correct on this one. So this is uh, part one in a series on optimal foot pronation or optimal mechanics of receiving your mass. Just reminding you that in pronation, the function of a pronating foot is receiving the mass of your body in gait. It's a shock absorbing foot. So part one, we are just gonna go over the general form of the exercise and then I'll add the rest of the pronation mechanics as we go along. So, First of all, we have to get you into the right starting position. I do recommend having a chair next to you. Um, if any of my exercises start to get really balancy, I'd like you to have a, a chair and you get a one finger touch on the back of a chair, not a white knuckle grip. So have it available, you don't have to use it, but if you start going, whoa, put a finger on the back of the chair. So the starting position, just to get into the position, uh, the right foot is going to be my working foot in this case, and I'm just going to ask you to take a step forward as if you were walking. This is just to get into the starting position. What I want you to notice, we're going to briefly talk about the back foot. As I step forward, in fact, I'll roll up my pants and make it really clear. As I step forward on the right, if I just take a natural step forward, my left heel will most likely lift off. I'm going to encourage you to get into the starting position just like this. Allow the left heel to lift off, it'll just naturally do so. And then I'm gonna encourage you to keep it off the ground for this exercise and then we're gonna forget about it. But I'm just inviting you to allow that heel to be off the ground. And let me just explain the reason I'm starting with this is we're gonna actually be focused on the working leg and we're gonna be doing a sort of lunge-like movement, and I think maybe because of yoga, I don't know, but the minute people come into some kind of lunge, they want their back heel down, but that's not going to work for receiving the mass of your, if your heel is down, you can't move forward onto the front foot, and that's what I want you to do. So we are going to forget about the left leg now, but just note that the heel is allowed to be off the ground. And in fact, I encourage you to have it off the ground. Now, the exercise itself, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle, but the absolute basics of the exercise is we're going to bring our center of mass. I'm gonna use the navel as a landmark. It's a little higher than your center of mass and it's a little further forward, but it actually works really well as a landmark because you're so aware of where your navel is. So the movement itself, is simply bring, you're going to bring your mass over, so your, your center of mass, your navel, is right on top of the front foot, and then just back off a little. And that is the basic movement, but I'm gonna get really picky and specific about how we're going to do this. So, that's the basic, but number one, I'm gonna use as a reference the top of your shin bone or the top of your tibia just below the knee. And I'm going to ask you 
to perform the movement that I just showed you, visualizing this is your tibia or shin bone, and I want you to visualize the top of the shin bone arcing down toward the floor and back off. The top of the shin bone arcs down and forward toward the floor and back off. That's the basic movement. Now, rule number one, your front heel does not get to lift. So a lot of people to go further, they're gonna lift the front heel. No, your front heel has to stay grounded. Remember the tripod. Number two, if you are someone who has cued yourself to only allow your knee to track over the middle of the foot, I actually want you to track, all of you, I want you to track your knee to the in, slightly to the inside of the big toe, just ever so slightly. I'm gonna face you momentarily. I am not asking you to do this <laughs> when you come forward. It's just a very slight inward motion, so I'm tracking just, if I look down and my kneecap is facing that way, it's slightly to the inside of my big toe. Okay, this is the part that's trickiest for most people. You're gonna travel your navel over the front foot by picturing the top of your shin bone arcing down and forward. My navel travels forward in space and my torso stays upright. For whatever reason, just about everybody I've ever worked with wants to lean to get their mass over the front foot. But I want you to think of your whole torso from your pelvis to your skull traveling forward in space upright as one piece. So one way to monitor that, there are several, but I'm gonna give you my favorite, and I highly recommend you do the side profile to a full length mirror. So you're gonna take your forearm, glue it to your pelvis, like the forearm glued to the pelvis. The motion comes from the top of the tibia, arcing down and forward. The heel of the front foot stays down. The knee tracks slightly to the inside of the big toe. And to monitor that I'm not leaning, my arm, if I were looking in the mirror, must stay vertical. So if I tilt at all in any direction, my arm is no longer vertical. Another cue, I'm just gonna give you an option, no one cue works for everyone, is your skull must stay right above your pelvis. So if you lean, skull's not above the pelvis anymore, okay? So I'm gonna add one last piece and then we'll put it all together again. Let me also reiterate, this is the most complicated exercise that I teach. So don't be discouraged. Everything else from here on out will be coasting downhill. So Let's even start by getting into the position. So we're gonna take a step forward on the right and allow the left heel to lift. Now, to be clear, the exercise does not involve stepping back, stepping forward, stepping back, stepping forward. You step forward once, you're in the starting position. You don't step back. The movement comes from the top of the shin bone, arcing down and forward toward the floor. I keep the front heel, I don't allow it to lift. I keep it on the floor. My knee tracks slightly to the inside of the big toe. And my torso stays upright, monitored by forearm glued to the pelvis. Forearm must stay vertical if I lean forearm, or arm must stay vertical if I lean the arm is not vertical. The final cue is, I highly recommend you put your finger on the back of the chair for this cue. You're going to arc the top of the shin bone down and forward toward the floor, knee tracking slightly to the inside of the big toe, heel stays down, torso stays vertical, and you are bringing your navel so far over your front foot that you could lift the back foot without leaning at all. I'm just gonna do a few, putting all the pieces together. So take a step forward. We're now in the starting position. The exercise itself, the top of the shin arcs down and forward toward the floor, and I back off. The top of the shin bone arcs down and forward toward the floor, and I back off. The top of the shin bone arcs down and forward, knee is tracking slightly to the inside of the big toe, heel stays down, torso stays vertical, test yourself. Could you lift the back foot without leaning? 
that tells me that you are completely, your center of mass is over the front foot. And that's the main thing that we want to accomplish in part one, part one of our multi-part progression and also making sure that we maintain an upright torso.